Hello, everyone. So we'll still wait a minute or two for anyone else who may be joining to join in. But hopefully everybody is doing well and we'll get started in just a few minutes here. So we'll get started, right? We're talking about a topic. This is gonna hopefully be a little bit more interactive than my seminar last Tuesday. So have some definite more kind of question type things that I'll want your guys' participation on or kind of thoughts on things like that as well. And right, a lot of those thoughts and ideas can be put into chat, right? So please only participate constructively in chat, right? Otherwise, I'll make chat kind of private, which is not ideal, right? I can set it so you guys can just participate and talk with me, but um, I'd rather you be able to kind of discuss the problems together as well. So please then just focus on kind of participating constructively on topic, no spamming, um, things like that as well. So remember our seminars here are for every group combined. So right, all of us have one group here as well. So that's why everyone is kind of all put together at one point at this time. Okay. So looks like we have at least a good number of people here. Some other people might be joining in, but yeah, I am instructor Mr. John, and in this kind of seminar, we're gonna be talking about taxicab geometry, it's often called, and this is really also an introduction to metrics. So this is a little bit more abstract when we're talking about metrics, but there's some really fun stuff we can do with kind of what we're calling taxicab geometry here as well. So this is kind of a thing if you Google search taxicab geometry, you can find some kind of more information about things like this as well. But we're going to kind of do a brief introduction to these two kind of things together here as well. So rough idea, right? What is the rough motivation for all of this? right? We're kind of thinking here about how do you measure distance between two points, right? So when I ask this question, or just if I ask you this question, you will say there is an answer, right? We have a usual definition of the distance between two points, right? You do the change in x, right? So interpreting this a little bit, right? finding some patterns and stuff, we have the change in X, you have the change in Y, right? You square both of these, right? And then you add them up and take the square root. And this is kind of giving us a, what we're gonna call today a Euclidean distance here. So in terms of kind of what a lot of you guys have been doing in the last couple of sessions of the camp, what kind of, if I needed you to prove this result, right? This is kind of a standard distance. This is usually how we would think about distance in kind of geometry a lot of the times. This distance basically is a result of what theorem that a lot of you guys have talked about recently. So this is just the Pythagorean theorem, kind of the distance there as well, right? So this kind of is our straight line distance, right? Between the two points, right? We're kind of saying here we have a right triangle and then we have our delta x on one side, delta y on the other. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Euclidean, again, we hear the famous geometer, right? Euclid showing up here, talking about kind of our distance and stuff like that too. So a little bit more theoretically here, let's kind of take a step back here. And I wanna ask people, what kind of properties might we want in a definition of the distance, 
right? Of course, you know, we wanted to kind of measure how far away something like that is. But what would kind of some things here be? Anybody have any thoughts about properties we might want to kind of think about if you were trying to come up with a new way to measure distance between kind of points or things like that? Okay, so yeah, direction and magnitude. Actually, do we often care about direction if we're talking about distance? Maybe not as much, right? So kind of maybe direction doesn't matter so much, right? So maybe something like direction doesn't, does not matter too much, right? So we kind of have this scalar quantity, right? So we're kind of talking about a number or things like this, right? So this is a, right, distance is some kind of number. Do we have any restrictions on the number usually if we're talking about distance? We probably want it to be what? So we probably, right, if we're thinking about, right, maybe real numbers or absolute values, we probably want it to be at least non-negative, right? And then we probably want some special things to happen with zero as well, right? So we're kind of thinking about these absolute values, right? Direction doesn't matter, things like that. So the standard ones kind of people agree on, and we'll kind of talk more formally about them in a second, but summarizing these in English, there's kind of four properties here. That is really three properties, because um, one of the properties you can kind of prove from the other ones. But kind of in English, talking about these, right, distances are never negative. So we kind of talked about this. The second or the other ones seem a little bit funny to say in words, but once we translate them to math, they should make kind of a lot more sense there. So I travel zero distance if and only if I haven't moved, right? So that would be a property here. So this is something talking about the zero values, right? So if I didn't move, I shouldn't have gone anywhere. And if I haven't gone anywhere, I shouldn't have traveled any distance or things like that. Um, that's kind of our second big property, right? The third property is kind of fun to say in English, but if I go from here to there, that should be the same distance as going from there to here, right? So it doesn't matter. This is our kind of direction idea coming in to play. And actually one of the most important ones, which is a little bit tricky to kind of think about in terms of the kind of English statement here, but suppose I want to go from here to there, right? It should never be kind of strictly faster to make a stop along the way, right? So what do I mean by kind of along the way? That's a little bit kind of unrigorous at this point, but there shouldn't be like shortcuts that kind of allow you to go there faster than going the direct route or kind of things like that as well, right? We'll see that maybe the direct route isn't as simple when we say direct route, right? But you can never be faster if you're kind of making a stop along the way. So the first three of these, you can probably translate fairly simply into kind of math. The fourth one is a little bit different, but I wanna kind of get us starting, get us started used, used to using these kind of vocabulary and also notation of this as well. So translating these same four statements into math now, we have the following. So all of these are gonna hold for points P and Q, right? There's no restrictions, any point P and Q, right? The distance between P and Q is greater than or equal to zero. Further, the distance is zero only if, right? If and only if we're at the same point, right? If the distance is zero, P and Q have to be the same. If P and Q are the same, the distance is zero. That's our kind of second property here, right? The order of the distance doesn't matter. P to Q is the same as Q to P. 
And our kind of final one is our stops along the way, right? The distance from P to Q should be less than or equal to the distance from P to R plus R to Q for any point R, right? So this one here makes kind of perfect sense kind of geometrically speaking, right? So this isn't going to be necessarily a good visualization all of the time, but kind of the idea here is if you go from P to Q, right? This is where kind of this stop along the way, right? For any point R is kind of like this stop along the way. There shouldn't be a point R, right, off to the side or something, where somehow if you go to R, you kind of then go to Q, that's somehow faster than going from P to Q. Now, we will talk a little bit more about different ways of measuring these things. Is, but just as a little bit of a preview of that, can somebody kind of give me an example where something like this may actually happen in real life? Why is it kind of, why do we sometimes need to be careful about things like this, right? Yeah, so right, maybe if we're traveling on roads, right, these things are a little bit kind of easier. Or what if we're going hiking in the woods and there's a path from P to R and a path from R to Q and the direct path from P to Q is like going through, right, some thick bushes and trees and, you know, a swamp or something, right? These things may be kind of more complicated in real life. Right, so depending on the distance metric you're using, you need to be kind of a little bit more careful with some of those things. But for our kind of standard distance, Euclidean distance, this is pretty obvious there. Right, so these four properties put together are what we refer to then as a metric. So if you have a function, right, from your space to the real numbers, satisfying these four properties, mathematically speaking, we would call it a metric. So if you want to kind of practice this a little bit, a good practice question to start is verify that the usual Euclidean distance is in fact a metric. If we go back there a second, this really boils down to a single property. Which of the properties is not obvious are not immediately obvious, algebraically speaking, right? Mathematically speaking, for the Euclidean distance, well, square roots are always greater than or equal to zero, right? This is obvious that the order of these doesn't matter, right? Everything except the last one is kind of pretty obvious for kind of our usual Euclidean distance. There, that one's more complicated. You'll actually need to use some kind of a little bit more inequality practice to do something like that there. Okay, so with this kind of start of an introduction here, right, we have this idea of metrics. We'll talk a little bit at the end about some different uses for metrics or things like that. But we want to kind of talk, again, still purely geometry. We want to talk about a specific other metric here, which shouldn't surprise you involves our kind of taxi cab name. So, right, the main example we're going to look at today is what we're going to call the taxi cab distance between two points. So, if we have points P and Q, the taxi cab distance is now the absolute value of the change in x. So we can still think of this as our kind of change in x and our kind of change in y in this case. So again, a good practice question here, just kind of working with the definitions and working with the logic of it, prove that this is a metric as well. This will actually still satisfy those four properties we have. So anybody have a guess as to where this name comes from? Where does kind of the name come from in this case? So 
So, right, the name comes from kind of like city blocks, which are often arranged, right, in a square kind of grid where you can only go, say, um, for example, north, south, or east, west, right? So this kind of is the idea of these things, right? So you're no longer kind of allowed to go diagonal, right? Or if you're playing a video game or something with a character that can only move horizontally and vertically, right? This kind of is where kind of these kind of taxi cab distance, th distance type things could come from. Just as a little caution, I'm not talking about fractions or decimals not existing anymore, right? So we could kind of go backward or we could go kind of those directions as well. Yeah, we're not really talking about negative speeds and stuff, right? So remember always here our kind of distances are going to be non-negative in this case. Okay, now let's look at a simple example with a couple points and start pointing out a couple of kind of interesting or different things that could happen if we're talking about taxicab distance versus Euclidean distance. And so just if you need refreshers ever along the way, let me kind of know, but this is kind of what we want to be thinking about then here. So we have our two points here, right? This is now where we can start getting into some actual problems that we could talk about or kind of do a little bit of math for. So we have our two points P and Q here. Normally speaking, so Euclidean distance speaking, what is the distance between these two points? So everybody see here that kind of our numbers are picked nicely here so that we have a distance of five between these two points, right? Actually, you have kind of like a three, four, five triangle we could view in this case, right? So this distance here, maybe let me change this five into green. So we have a distance of five. And then everyone or some people are saying then seven as well. Right, so the seven is coming from, right, we have a three in one direction and a four in the other direction here. So is everybody good with kind of our very, very kind of basic example of this here? So there's always a distance, right, between these two points. Now, the green line I drew, right, so for Euclidean distance, Right, the green line is the unique shortest or the unique path with length five from P to Q. Does that type of thing exist for taxicab distance in general? In general, um, can we kind of talk about a unique path here? Right, there are many, or there may, right, may be multiple, right, paths with length seven from P to Q. Well, okay, let me not say may here, right? There are multiple paths of length seven, right? In general, do you have to have multiple paths? Not necessarily. That's a little bit of a preview of kind of some other stuff, but at this point, this should remind you guys of a lot of counting questions I'm sure you've done, right? How many of these paths are there that kind of go from P to Q, right? You can easily count the number of paths, right? Um, there's kind of different versions of that, but we definitely have these kind of multiple paths in some cases. So we have some kind of specific kind of distances in this case. So 
we see an example here of when taxi cab is greater than the Euclidean distance. So my follow-up question here would be, can these distances, can DE and DT ever be equal to each other? Yes, they can. Can anybody describe when that's going to happen, right? We can pretty easily here kind of say when some situations. Okay, yeah, so definitely when they're zero, that works, right? So in kind of a little bit more general than that, right, any time, right, P and Q share an X or Y coordinate. So if this is going straight up, or straight left and right, right, they're going to be equal to each other there, kind of, too. Um, now, can the Euclidean distance ever be greater than the taxi cab distance? No, right? So we definitely have a kind of relationship here where kind of there kind of distances related that way, right, kind of are kind of changed and stuff like that too. Okay, so other kind of questions you could kind of think about here, right? If we have equal distances in one metric, does that mean that they're equal in the other metric, right? That's not necessarily true either. So I'll just say that one kind of verbally speaking, but maybe, or let me type it out as kind of an extra thing to think about. So extra question to think about here, right? So for example, you could do this in either order, right? But so things like does, right, DE of PQ equaling say like DE of PT or PR, right, imply that kind of their distances are the same DT of PQ equals DT of PR, right, or vice versa. Right, so these types of relationships are kind of interesting to kind of think about as well. And we'll actually kind of answer this question in a second here, but um, I'll let you kind of always think, of, think about that and kind of see if you can think about and answer that in a slightly more kind of generalized way as well. Okay, so as far as kind of geometry is concerned then, we might kind of want to think about shapes. And in particular, one shape we'll start with has a very kind of close relationship with distance, right? And so what is a shape here that really kind of has a definition that depends on a distance in a kind of very, very strict way? What shape could you write out kind of as a collection of points satisfying some distance equation here. Well, that equation is our circles here. So we're going to look a little bit in the next couple minutes uh, about circles and things like that. So definition of a circle, of course, is the collection of points, a set distance, the radius from a center point C. So yeah, we know what the equation of a circle looks like. But I want us to kind of get comfortable with the idea of a circle definition using distance here. So if C is 0, 0, right? So if we're thinking about this circle with kind of usual equation, right? Of course, we do have x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared, right? That is our kind of algebraic expression here. Yeah. A lot of these things, right, and this is something we'll touch on a little bit 
if we have some time a little bit later, right? But we want to kind of picture this now as, okay, if we have C being 0, 0, we want to look at the collection of points P. So this is all the points P such that the distance from C to P is 2. Yeah, so this is kind of sometimes called a locus definition. Sometimes you could write this out in terms of sets. So this is like all the points P such that the restriction of these points is, right, DE, the distance between C and P is 2. So yeah, we're looking at the collection of all points so that the distance between 0, 0, and P is equal to 2. So that gives us our circle here, right? You can think of your kind of compass being drawn, right? Giving you, after you spin it around, this definition of a circle here. So everybody kind of clear with our distance definition of a circle? Because then, uh, of course, our natural question is, well, what if we change the distance, right? We just got done talking about this whole beginning portion. Okay, here's a new type of distance, the taxi cab distance. So let's think about that then here. So what happens if we're talking about a taxi cab circle? So again, we have the same center, right? We have C equals zero, zero. What is the collection of points P? such that the distance in taxi cab distance is equal to 2. Yeah, so if you've seen some of these before, we could write out the equation and stuff, but I really don't want us to think about this in terms of the equation, right? I kind of think, want to think of us being a taxi cab driver or a person walking kind of a distance only left, right, only kind of up, down, things like that here. So is everybody clear? I'll kind of clean up the diagram a little bit in a second. But we could, of course, walk two units in a single direction, right? So two units to the right gives us a point, two units up gives us a point, right? Et cetera, et cetera. So we definitely have these four points that we're kind of looking at on our diagram. So everybody good with those four to start at least? Now, similarly speaking, we can also do one and one. So one unit over, one unit up. Well, again, other directions could be fine here too. All right, so we have all of these kind of four points as well. Now, we had a claim here that this kind of fills in to be a full diamond like this. So just to explain that a tiny bit, right, kind of the examples here, how would fractions kind of work? Well, what if you went one and a half over, right? You could go one and a half over and then a half down. Right, so this could be like a 1.5 over and then a 0.5 down. And so that would get you to this point here. So we're kind of getting this diamond shaped scenario for our taxi cab circle, right? It's actually a square, <laughs> normally speaking here, but kind of um, this would be kind of what our shape is gonna look like in this taxi cab geometry stuff here. Yeah, like I said, you could think about writing out the equations and stuff like that too, but that's kind of the general strategy for this, right? This is our taxi cab circle now. If you change the distance, you're gonna get bigger diamonds, right? You can, of course, change the center. That's not gonna really mess with anything of the distance there too. So we're always gonna get this kind of diamond-shaped for a taxi cab circle. Now, interesting question you can kind of think about here. I don't want to talk about this much right now. So extra question, right? And I want to put a caution with this. So caution, you need to be careful 
with what area or perimeter means. But the often, uh, often kind of common question you'll see at this point is, well, what is pi in taxicab geometry? So I don't want to talk about this right now, right? This is actually more confusing than you kind of may think. Um, but this is kind of an extra question you can think about a little bit and kind of keep in mind for later on and stuff like that as well. So everybody kind of 100% good with our taxi cab circle here? Because the next one we're gonna look at is a little bit more complicated. So we better kind of make sure this one is okay before we kind of move on to the next one as well. So next question, we're gonna do both in terms of the Euclidean metric, which or Euclidean distance, which I think a lot of people have, are kind of comfortable with, but I still want us to kind of draw it and understand it for sure as well. So now I want to do some kind of slightly off kilter points here. So A is the point negative one, negative one. B is the point two, zero. So we have these two points here. And given those fixed points, what is the collection of points such that the distance from A to P is equal to the distance of D to, or P to B? Okay, so yeah, we wanna be kind of a little bit careful with this one. So does everybody agree that the point David mentioned definitely works? So 100%, it should be 100% clear, hopefully, that the midpoint, right, definitely is the same distance here, right? So the midpoint, definitely works, right? So yeah, we have this midpoint there kind of in the middle. Now, is it the only point that works? Yeah, I think a lot of you guys are kind of saying no, right? There's kind of infinitely many of these that are gonna work. Again, you can do all of this geometrically, but I kind of, or you can do it all algebraically. Right, and by kind of algebraically, geometrically, I mean you kind of write out the formulas and stuff like that there, right? But I kind of want to think about this kind of intuitively in terms of our kind of picture and stuff like that as well. So, right, we have a claim here that this kind of perpendicular bisector works as well. So it's easier to make it perpendicular first and then kind of move it into place as well. So does everybody see why these kind of work? For example, if we have a point up here, I'll erase this in a second, but you look at this triangle, right? And this triangle, and if you're kind of on the perpendicular bisector, these two triangles are congruent to each other. And so then this distance here is equal to this distance there. Another way of putting this is this is all of the points that will give you an isosceles triangle where these two edges, right, are equal to each other, right? So in fact here, anything, any point on the perpendicular bisector will work here. So this kind of is our collection of points that is kind of a equal distance from A to B here. So this is our, yeah, kind of perpendicular bisector. In a sense, you could kind of think about this as a perpendicular bisector definition if you're kind of talking about kind of things in terms of Euclidean distance. This is where they kind of coincide here. Okay, so just drawing that picture again, of course, a little bit nicer in this case, we could go to my next slide, which has us kind of showing that collection of points there. 
Okay. So I think everybody should be 100% clear as what's coming next as well. You should be able to predict the future now and recognize my next slide here, which is going to be, right, now we're replacing distance in taxicab geometry. So now we want to look at this kind of collections of points where we have the taxicab distance is the same between those kind of collections of points. Okay, we don't have anything absurd happening today. This is all pretty straightforward stuff today. So let's not worry about that right now. Now, everybody good that the midpoint still works. Definitely still should have Definitely still have the midpoint here as well. Everybody kind of okay with that? So if I have my kind of midpoint here, one half, one half, right? One half, one half should still work in this case. Now, some kind of weirder stuff happens as well. So I don't want to talk about the shape or the line or anything yet. But can anybody give me other points that work? So just if you're worried about kind of the details here a little bit, right? So the midpoint, right? So um, negative one half, negative one half, right? Is distance two from each, right? So this is kind of still the normal type of midpoint, right? In fact here, right, if we thought about the distance in total between these, the distance is four, and the midpoint still cuts it half and half. So that's kind of a similarity we have here. Now, zero, zero, here's some differences, right? Zero, zero and one negative one are distance one, sorry, are still distance two from each, right? Actually, right, um, zero, zero, and kind of one, negative one, are still distance two from each. So is everybody kind of okay with that portion here? Okay, so one, negative two, one, negative three. Yeah, let me come back to that in a second here. Now, what about other points distance two from each? Let me kind of clarify that first. In fact, all of these right there are distance two from each. So the way I wanna kind of picture this, and this will get ahead of ourselves a tiny bit here, but kind of inside this box, right? What is this box? This is the box of kind of all the paths, right? Up and right and then right and up from one, negative one, negative one to two, zero. We have all of these paths in the middle of distance two, right? So we're kind of cutting this in half. We have this slope here of negative one connecting them there. Now, we had a claim that these are vertical lines after this. That's what somebody was guessing here, or not guessing, but mentioning here. So does everybody see that this actually does work, right? We can still have another set that these are now distance three from each. Then if we did another step, right, we would have distance four from each. And in fact, outside of our kind of shortest path box or outside this kind of inner portion, we actually have this kind of vertical, vertical lines in both cases. So we have a vertical line one direction and kind of the other direction there. So now kind of our shortest or equal distance from the two points, this perpendicular bisector looks quite a bit different in this case. Right, we have these kind of two points. We have our midpoint for sure, 
but then it kind of follows this 45 degree angle. And then once we're outside this box, it becomes straight lines from dip. There's definitely some patterns you can look at there with those things, right? There's definitely a lot of kind of things you can keep in mind with that, but I'll let you kind of think a little bit more about those kind of equal distances there too. Okay, so all of these could be graphed nicer where I'm not graphing it either. And let's look at a couple more examples here too. And rather than having the slides for this, let's just kind of do this where we could kind of see them online as well. So let me share a new screen here a second. And if you guys could let me know that you can see this screen okay, that would be kind of great as well. So let me make things a little bit darker here. So can people see kind of our graph again here? So again, we're gonna kind of do it two ways, right? We're gonna do it ourselves and then kind of have the computer do it for us as well. But the next one I kind of wanna look at here, and this one's a little bit more complicated and a little bit different here. So here we're looking at this kind of two times distance one in this case. So the kind of thing I wanna look at here, right? So we have our two points A and B, right? So what does the collection of points where kind of the distance from E, distance in Euclidean space from A to P is equal to I want to make sure I did this the right order, twice the distance from B to P. So here we're kind of looking at a slightly different scenario, a slightly different collection of points here. This one doesn't have as kind of nice of solutions or doesn't have as nice of kind of ways of thinking about this a little bit. So let's start by plotting some points. So everybody agree that zero, zero will work here? So this is where we kind of have some slight differences of things when we're looking at it here. So zero, zero, that is one to the left of B, right? And then, so twice of that is two, so that's two to the right of A. Now, when Y equals zero, can we find another example that works in this case? So there's kind of another, there is exactly actually another example where p is something kind of zero here. So what about to the right of one zero? Can we find a point somewhere over here that will work this way? What if we go some units to the right of one zero and then that's some units again right to the right of negative two. So anybody kind of see what we could have there? So for example, when we're looking here, right, we have one and two. Okay, so we had a suggestion here of four zero in this case. So notice here now, right, this distance is three, and if we talk about the total distance there, this is going to be six. Is that kind of okay with everybody here? Okay, let's try to kind of stay focused here a little bit as well. Okay, so 
let's kind of think about this a little bit. Anybody see another point here? This one's a little bit kind of more complicated than the other ones that we could kind of talk about, right? You could, of course, start thinking about things in terms of some algebra, right? Write some algebraic equations and stuff here. But let me kind of give us a point and see if you guys think it works here as well. So what about the point 2, 2? Does this point work up here? Okay, let's not try kind of Morse code or anything like this. So I want to kind of do our checks again here. Right, so this distance here is one, two, right? So this is square root of five, right? And then to our other point there, right? If we connect these points here, right? We have a change of four and a change of two, right? So actually here, you can just think about these as in ratio, right? So we had a change of one and two, now we have a change of four and two. So this is going to be two square root of five, and that one kind of works in this case. So with two, two, you should be able to give me by symmetry another value that kind of works here. So maybe let me start kind of labeling our points. We have a zero, zero. We have a two, two, which is no longer a question mark, right? We have a four, zero. And then of course, some negative values here should work as well, right? So by symmetry, if we go down instead of up, we can get two comma negative two here. Any guesses as to what shape we're gonna have then here? Diamond. So we have a couple of thoughts for a diamond here. So you guys are asking the question, does one one work? So what if we look here? So if this was a, sorry, not, yeah, one one. If this was a diamond, one one should definitely work. It's too close to which point? It's too close to B, right? So we kind of need to move it up a little bit. Right, so actually the point here is going to be kind of somewhere up a little bit higher from there, right? So it's not really going to be a hexagon. It's going to be more curved and stuff like that here. In fact, this is going to give us another circle, right? So uh, in here, when you're thinking about these things, Remember, you can always write, and this will be a good thing to prove if you kind of are thinking about this algebraically, right? In fact, this is going to give us this circle we can see right here. All of these points, right, are twice the distance from the other. If you think about this algebraically a little bit, it should be pretty obvious that this kind of works out there. Right, so a lot of these things you can prove algebraically to kind of look at here. So we could also think about this if we were kind of comparing this to the taxi cab case, right? And so stuff is going to be a little bit different there. So let's try to kind of quickly do a couple of points there too. Are there any of these points that I want to keep here? So which one of these points can we definitely keep if we're talking about the taxi cab distances? So if we kind of repeat this again, right? What if we repeat for So if we repeat for the distance, right, taxi cab distance here, so definitely the zero, zero will still work, right? So this value definitely kind of works here. The four, zero will kind of work here 
as well. So does 2-2 two, two work here? So our distance in one here, right, is going to be one plus two is three. And then this distance is also correct that way as well. So does everybody see kind of that this is kind of gonna look very, very similar in that case? Yeah, so this one here should give us kind of our diamond shape here as well, right? So this kind of same type of thing here is kind of going on in this case. I'm here a little bit worried about my Okay, so everybody kind of clear with the kind of picture we have in this case? Okay, so okay, so this point will work here. So what about one three? So two two will work, right? Our kind of bottom one will also work as well. So we have two negative two. Now, so Henry, you're kind of saying something maybe is different this time. Is that what you're kind of suggesting here? So you're suggesting one three. So does one three work in this case? Right, so you guys are kind of correct, but I'm not exactly sure if you saw the same type of diamond that we kind of actually have in this case, right? So we have one three here, right? It should be kind of clear that if we now step these in a linear line, that these kind of values work as well. So in fact here, right, and maybe it's just good to look at both of these at once at this point, right? We have our original circle and, right, we have kind of a squished diamond, right? If you wanna call this a diamond, I'm fine with you still calling it a diamond, but yeah, it's not a taxi cab circle anymore, right? So I wanna notice here, even if we're doing these kind of taxi cab stuff, right? This is a little bit different when we're doing the double distances and things like that as well. So really quickly here, since we're kind of getting towards the end, anybody know kind of how we can define an ellipse in terms of distances? and things like that. So let me get rid of my kind of um, stuff there. So what about an ellipse? So right, for an ellipse, okay, yeah, so we have these ideas of the foci or things like that, right? So for an ellipse, Right, we can look at the distance right from A to a point P. So it's the collection, uh, collection of points P such that right the distance from A to P plus the distance from B to P is some constant value here. Right, so this is where we kind of have a. Uh, situation where we could be looking at an ellipse of something. So notice this is an extension of a circle, right? And a circle would be the case where A and B are the same, right? We have just a distance from the center to these points. Now we're adding up these values there. So, right, for example, let me graph one of these here, 
Let me cheat a second. Okay. So, whoops, I only want to graph one of them, right? So this example we could be looking at here is this constant distance is five. So what happens if this distance is five in this case? Right, so just a couple examples here, right? We have a distance of one, and then we have a distance of four, right? So one plus four is five, right? So that's why that point negative three, zero is on the graph, right? If we look at kind of other points, right? We have kind of other points on this ellipse, always, right, the sum of the two distances, right? So if we have like a D1, plus a d2, they are going to add up to five in that case. So that's what we could have as an ellipse. So we, I think we heard this shape mentioned before, right? What happens if we kind of do this for taxi cab, right? So what does our taxi cab ellipse look like? Our taxi cab ellipse is gonna actually look like a hexagon in this case. So now again, we have these distances are added up to each other. We do share some points in common. Should it surprise us that the points in common are on the horizontal axis? No, because we started pretty early saying that's where the distances agree, right? So we have our kind of general Euclidean ellipse. shown here in green, and then our purple in this case is going to be our taxicab ellipse here. Okay, so any questions about this? If people have heard of hyperbolas or parabolas or things like that, you could think about, right, and those are good extra questions here to think about, right? Um, think about what a taxi cab, right, parabola or, right, is, or a taxi cab hyperbola is, right? And so not only do you have to have heard of these, right, you have to know their kind of definitions like this. So for example, remember a parabola really quickly is you have a point and a line right? And it's the same distance from the point to the parabola as it is from the line to the parabola, right? So you can look at those types of things as well. Okay, so going back for our kind of closing to our slides, I just want to say, right, of course we are focused mostly on geometry this week. But I want to kind of end with saying, right, again, our summary of a metric, it has all of these distance properties here, right? So we have kind of non-negative, it's only zero if you're at the same point, um, you know, we have some symmetry stuff, all of these kind of different distances and stuff as well. You can also mess with these things. So, one of the important things that we did, right? So in fact, one of the ways people strengthen these, so a strengthening, right? So both Euclidean distance and taxicab distance are what's called translational invariant. Um, so or I guess just transition, translation invariant. So what that means is that if you move the points around, the distance doesn't change. Sometimes that's not going to be true. That would be kind of weird. You could, of course, come up with scenarios where maybe that would make sense. But like if we turn 1, 1, to 1, 1 2, 2, that path into 5, 5 to 6, 6, that shouldn't change the distance. It doesn't change it in Euclidean distance or taxi cab distance. So this would be kind of this translation invariant there. And sorry, I think invariant is with an A, not an E. Okay, so 
that's actually an unintended preview of the next slide, right? I just want to say as kind of closing, you can do these things in a lot of different scenarios as well. We talked a little bit here about kind of paths, right? Maybe if you have a graph, right? You have some points or vertices on this graph, right? Maybe this kind of is roads connecting the different places on this graph, right? And you have things like, oh, it takes two hours to travel this road, one hour, right? You know, three hours, you know, two hours, right? You could talk about graph metrics where it's kind of the distances between the vertices, things like that as well. You could also have this Hamming distance or kind of Levenstein distance for strings. So what did I kind of just do there, right? So I had invariant versus, right, invariant, right? Those kind of different spellings there, right? And so, right, in a sense, these distances, you might want to ask how badly did somebody misspell a word, right? So invariant here, right? I missed one letter, right? So if we fixed one letter, we could kind of say, oh, then we have the correct word, right? And so these kind of distances there, right? Hamming distance is kind of one way to do this. Levenstein distance is kind of a more complicated way, right? Because what if you kind of are missing letters or you have different lengths of strings? The Levenstein distance can deal with that. Hamming distance cannot deal with that. But there's lots of different places, lots of different examples you can do metrics with as well. Okay, so if there are any questions, now is a decent time to ask. Otherwise, that kind of is bringing us to the end pretty much of our presentation for today, right? It gave you some interesting or hopefully interesting questions, right? Think about what could a parabola be? What could a kind of um, hyperbola be? If you want to practice some of your algebra stuff, especially if you joined us last week, try to prove some of these things are metrics. That's kind of going to be related to some of the inequalities and stuff you looked at before. So otherwise then, I will just say thank you to everybody for coming here. So remember, we're kind of back in our normal groups in 15 minutes. Otherwise, kind of thank you guys for listening for today. And let me know on the forum or any other places if you have some questions about metrics or things like that as well. So goodbye before this gets too absurd in here. I will see you guys all later.